Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Bales and Buzzers. Yes, hello everyone. Welcome along once again to Bales and Buzzers. It's our look at the World Cup here, and as usual, we're joined by Buzzer himself, Johnny Bell. Hello, Johnny, and welcome. Thanks, Robert. How are you? And on the couch, we have a very special guest tonight. It's the Irish all-rounder, South African-born Albie Vandermeer. Albie, welcome. Thanks, Robert. Well, I guess South Africa is uh, all the flavour and the talk of the uh, the moment. Last time, Johnny, that we were on the couch together, we were talking about how South Africa had struggled and, um, you know, they'd, they'd uh, not done that well in the tournament by their own expectations. Yeah. But all that changed very, very quickly, didn't it? It did, yeah. And I think, Albert, you'll know more about it than most. I mean, what, were your, what are your thoughts on South Africa now at this stage after... They're a big win against the West Indies. Oh, look, they've, they've always been one of the pre-tournament favourites. Um, they've had a, a bit of a hiccup against against India and admittedly a very good Indian side that probably wasn't tipped to be one of the, the strong, strong, stronger contenders maybe pre-World Cup. But, you know, India's a good side and come World Cup time, they're always up there. And South Africa had a bit of a glitch, but maybe, maybe it was a good thing for them at the time. And they came out strong against the West Indies and, you know, we know what they can do. Yeah. I was going to ask you that actually. That you know, after I know the sports minister, I think it was, put them under a fair bit of pressure just when they were leaving South Africa. Essentially, said, "Don't come back, losers," <laughs> and uh, and and of course, then struggling in their their first match, then getting defeated. It was probably just the the kick up the bum they needed to sort of really get themselves going. And of course, having a man like AB who can lead from the front does help just a bit. Oh, absolutely. He's a, he's a special player. I mean, he's he's undoubtedly going to go down in, in the history of the game as one of the, the best one-day international and best batsmen there was. Or, and, you know, the, the guy plays with a freedom and uh, a passion that it's, it's nearly unrivaled. So, you know, coming up against them, and the West Indies have kind of have that now probably twice in the last four weeks with their pre-World pre Cup trip. So it can't be easy being standing at the top of your mark having to bowl to him. Yeah, exactly. And the interesting thing with him, from what from what I've seen too, he's a very humble man, and uh, and I think that's something that a lot of people believe is also the mark of a true champion in some cases as well, where they have this extreme confidence, but at the same time he carries himself very well. He's a real he's a real ornament to the game, isn't he? Absolutely. He's a he's he's a team man through and through. Um, and if you listen to his interviews after after games, that mm. he's one man of the match yeah. performances, you know. He kind of deflects it away from himself, and and it's it's all about the team for him. And I think he said after the Indian loss, he was talking about how you know he's feeling sad and he's gonna you know take a bit of time and just sit in his room and feel sad about you know the loss. And yeah. and I think that's kind of hit him hard, and he's come out and taken it upon his own shoulders to yeah. to kind of rectify that. Yeah. Because I think you know now with probably with India beating South Africa, and I think. You know, the likelihood is South Africa will probably end up as runners-up in, 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 in the pool. Which will who, who would you see them coming up against? I mean, I know it's easy to say, but I mean, the quarter-final they're going to come up against, who is it going to be? Well, at the minute, yeah. Sri Lanka still has to play Australia. Yeah. Um, with Australia's run out against Bangladesh, with a, that being a one-pointer, um, if Australia beat Sri Lanka, then uh, by all accounts, South Africa will probably play Sri Lanka yeah. in the, the quarter-finals. If Sri Lanka upsets... Um, um, the Australians, which would be an upset for me, then potentially South Africa would play Australia, Australia in the quarterfinal, yeah. which would be a huge quarterfinal. Yeah, because I mean, I suppose in South Africa have gone so far, 92, World Cup 96, and there's that, would you mention the, the, the chokers tag that yeah. with South Africa, but I think they've gone, be, I think they're, they're beyond that yeah. now. I think it's kind of been bandied around the world as, as a tag more than, yeah. than anything yeah. else, and I think. Um, maybe unfair, unfairly yeah. so, you know, you've had the rain affected twice, you know, in the yes. 2003 World Cup, they they needed one more run to qualify for the knockout stages. Um, 99 was the yeah, amazing game yeah. against Australia. Yeah, and then yeah. um, other games they came up against uh, inspired Brian Lara in 96, yes. yeah. scored 100 in the quarterfinals. Yeah. And uh, 
and 2007 they met Australia in the semi-finals yeah. and yeah. they yeah. took yeah. it away from them. Yeah, so. yeah. One, uh, one man doth not a team make, but uh, let's look at the rest of the team quickly before we head off to our special interview tonight too. Ed Joyce joining us very shortly with Bales for a chat. Where do you see the other key components to the South African team? I think, I mean, you look, you look at Hashim Amla at the top of the order, he'll be the, the bedrock of the South African innings and they'll try to build their, their innings around him. I mean, the guy's got 19 ODI hundreds and nearly 40 fifties and batting at 90 strike rate. And, you know, he's, he's the platform for South Africa. You've got Quinton de Kock, um, exciting, exciting um, prospect. Got, he's got six... 600s, um, 450, so his conversion rate is massive. Faf Duplessis, a wealth of experience mm, yeah. um, playing in the IPL. Um, Riley Rousseau, another young, promising guy with um, IPL experience, and he's, he's had a good start to his World Cup. Um, so, yeah, you know, David Miller, I mean, yeah. that's yeah. guy strikes the ball as well as anyone else. So, you know, it's a formidable, formidable top six. Um, JP Dumini, by all accounts, is not going to play. Um, so it'll be interesting to see which way they're going to go with, with Bahadin at seven or if they're going to pick Parnell maybe yeah. as an extra bowler. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think with Jack Cullis' retirement, that mm -hmm. kind of balance within yeah. the, the squad, they're still looking to kind of see really how and what's the best formula for them. But well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel like a, a bit like AB. I'm starting to feel very sad after you're just running through every player <laughs> yeah, on the team yeah. there. Um, yeah. This is Bales and Buzzers. Uh, Albie van der Merwe is our special guest. But right now we're going to join Bales because he caught up on the eve of this big, big match for Ireland. He caught up with their Joyce, and then we're going to come back and talk to Albie about the Irish team. We're absolutely delighted to be joined on the phone live from Canberra ahead of Ireland's game against South Africa by Ed Joyce. Ed, thanks so much for taking the call. No problem, good to be here. Ed, we head into tomorrow's game um, on the back of two wins. Is the on with the onus more on South Africa to get a result in this game, do Ireland go into this game with less expectation on our shoulders? Yeah, I think that would be fair. I think we went into the last game definitely as favourites and, and we were expected to win. Obviously, UAE played really well and we were pushed very close and you know, without two very uh, exceptional innings at the end there by Kevin and Wills, then we might not have got over the line. But this time around, obviously, against a very strong South Africa team, obviously, we're, we're underdogs again and, and perhaps that suits us a little bit better. But, um, we, you know, we're... We're in a good place. We've won two out of two, and and uh, we're we're confident. Everyone's batting well. We've had obviously problems with bowling in the last 15 overs, but we've done pretty well up until that point. So, you know, we've had a good chat about maybe changing our plans a little bit for for those last 15, and and hopefully we can do that in this game. Yeah, you mentioned the plans there. Obviously, so much attention is on maybe De Villiers. Have the bowlers in particular, you know, planned any strategy to try to to to, to quell AB? Um, honestly, I think. Uh, William Porterfield obviously said in this press conference it's very difficult to plan for someone as, who's obviously as very as, as good as him and he hits it through a 360. I think all you've got to do is play to your strengths. Our strengths are, you know, we, we've got guys who take the pace off the ball pretty well. Um, we've got some spinners who, who've who bowled really well so far in, in this tournament and, you know, we'll look to do that. There's no secret to our bowling. We'll look to take pace off and, and hopefully get him to hit, hit in front of the bat. I think the innings he's played so far, which have been unbelievable to watch, you know, he's an amazing guy to watch, but, um, you know, he's had a lot of pace on the ball. So, you know, it'll be a different challenge for him. Um, as I said, he's, he's a brilliant player, so we'll, we'll, we'll try our best to stop him, but we're not just concentrating on him. They have a, they have a batting lineup, obviously, which is very strong. They've got guys in form, obviously, Hashi Mamla, look, they look to bat around him, so we'll, we'll obviously hopefully, hopefully get him out like we did in the last World Cup early and, and hopefully get through a few, of their, a few of their guys early. But they've got a lot of dangerous players, not just AB, but you know, he, he has been pretty special so far. And from your point of view, has the batsman um, planned anything around facing this clinical and, and um, really strong South African attack? Obviously, you've got Stain and Morkel up front and even Imran to here through the middle overs. Yeah, they're a top team. Um, I think we saw in the last game what they're capable of. They absolutely destroyed the West Indies. Um, I think we've just got, a, as I said, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but we, we do have a good strong batting lineup, and we made a point of going into this tournament looking to try and be 
positive, um, you know, trying to take the positive option whenever we could. I think we've done that pretty well in the first two games, uh, especially against the West Indies. I thought that was a big strength of ours. We always took a positive option and it came off for us. So, you know, it looks to be a very good wicket tomorrow and the, uh, it looks a very flat wicket and it usually is a lot of runs here. So I think we've got to look to, if we bat first, we're going to have to look to get 300 to, to have a chance of winning maybe. Um, obviously, if we don't get that, we'll still try and defend it with everything we can. But And then if we're chasing, we're, you know, it's, it's likely everyone seems, everyone else seems to be getting 250 to 300. So look, it's likely we'll be chasing a reasonable total. So, you know, we're just setting ourselves up to try and be as positive as, as possible. I suppose I had a good work, chat with Nobby and Niall O'Brien before the before the tournament, and the two of us sort of made a, a pact between the two of us to try and um, to try and you know score a run of balls. So hopefully, we can do that in this tournament. Yeah, and from a personal point of view, I think you said before you went out to the tournament as well that you were sort of targeting the first game or or two to to get a big score under your belt. You've done obviously done that against the West Indies, and you got to start against the UAE. So, how confident are you personally going into this game? Yeah. I am very confident. I've actually hit the ball really well. And, um, I hadn't hit the ball that well in the nets up into the UAE game, and I sorted a few things out in the, in the, in the nets leading up to this game. So I felt, I felt really good today. So hopefully I can bring that in tomorrow, into tomorrow. Um, there should be a bit of pace on the ball. Obviously you mentioned Stain and, and Morkel there, and Kyle Abbott's a fine bowler as well. I expect him to play. And, you know, as I said, there'll be a bit of pace on the ball, so it should be quite nice. Um, obviously, it comes with a bit of uh, physical threat, obviously, with the fact that they can bowl, you know, 90 mile an hour bounces and stuff like that. But it should suit our players a bit more to have that pace on the ball. So hopefully, we can use that. Imran Tahir is, uh, did brilliantly in the last game with a huge total behind him. He's a he's a fantastic bowler. He's done really well in county cricket and in some South African domestic cricket, and and he's and he's fitted into this uh, that South African team really well. He's a wicket taking threat in the middle, which everyone's searching for. So. You know, he he doesn't spin his leggy hugely, and um, he's got a very dangerous googly and a very dangerous sort of slider ball as well. So we'll we'll obviously be wary of that. But you know, all these guys, we've got to look to 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 take them on a little bit and 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 uh, and try and score off them because if you don't do that, they'll 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 eat you up. Yeah, and it's been a couple of days since that UAE game, Ed. Um, what does the team do in their downtime? Uh, you know, it's it's difficult to obviously pass the time between games, is it? Uh, difficult, probably not the right word. I think we 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 had a few beers after the game um, to celebrate the win, as you should do, and then we tr we spend the next day travelling, um, which are always long, sort of boring days, but you got to get them done, obviously. And then um, and then the last few days we've been training pretty much every day, so we had a day off the, the day after the travel. Um, I have no idea what day it is, so I'm not going to tell you what day that was, but we played a bit of golf on that day. And then we've been training the last three days. So um, we actually managed to get out in the golf course again this afternoon. Um, a lot of the guys' wives and girlfriends are here now, so they're sort of um, hanging out with them. And I think that's a good thing at this stage of the tour. We've obviously been together four or five weeks in the, in the Dubai trip before that as well. So we spent a huge amount of time together. So it's quite nice to get away from that and, and uh, see some new faces and, and uh, you know, do some other things. So we, we've, we've got a table tennis table in, in the bottom there, which, which three or four of us play quite regularly. And, and you know, our time is taken up of training and, and, and a lot of stuff like that. There's also the cricket on most days as well, so a lot of us will watch that together and, and go out for dinner and things like that. But um, it's a lot of fun, but it's, it can get a bit much uh, after four or five weeks, as I said, so it'll be nice when the families get out here. Yeah, and Kevin, I think, tweeted yesterday there's a, a big contest going on between Alim Dar and Roy Torrens at the table tennis. Who's the, who's the king of ping pong in the squad? In the squad, well, can I, I can confirm that Alim Dar was certainly the king of ping, ping pong in that game. Um, we have a security guard, I don't know what his name is, but he, he basically took everyone down yesterday. So um, he, he, he had us all covered, very strange sort of technique, but he was far, far too good for us all. But probably, the, I'd say the top three would be Balberni, Sterling and Joyce would be the top three, I think, mm. in that order. Brilliant. Um, and finally, uh, just obviously you mentioned downtime there and trying to get away from cricket. You know, on your off days, do the squad sit down and watch the other games, particularly in our own group? We're all we all love our cricket, so it's 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 nice to be able to watch those games. I certainly do. I'm a bit of a cricket badger, so I love watching the cricket. Um, uh, there was no game today, which is obviously um, not ideal. But as I said, we got out in the golf course. We don't we don't necessarily sit down together, but most of the guys will watch the individual games whenever we get a chance. Uh, we obviously play so much cricket and we're training so much that sometimes it's nice to get away from it, but um, it's, it's also great that it's on the telly and as I said, most of us like to watch it. Ed, thanks so much for joining us this morning on the eve of the South African game. Cheers, Ryan. We can only wish you and the team the best of luck for not only tomorrow, but the rest of the tournament. Thanks very much. Cheers.
Welcome back to Bales and Buzzers. It's Robbo here. Johnny's with us on the couch and Albie Vandermover is our special guest. Uh, very interesting thoughts there from Ed Joyce ahead of the big game against South Africa. We'd like to thank at this point too our very good friends at CurrencyFair.com, great supporters of the show. We'll tell you more about a great special for people watching Bales and Buzzers in a little while. But firstly, let's go back and have a chat to Albie. We've already looked at the South African side and perhaps before we look at Ireland, let's talk a little bit about Albie's experiences yeah in the World Cup situation. Yeah, I suppose, because, I mean, you, you've you been part of the, the 2011 squad. I mean, and what, what way would the, do you think the f players would be feeling now, you know, in in the hotel? Yeah, I think it's, you know, whenever you get da downtime, you try and spend it accordingly. It depends where you were. When, you know, I was fortunate enough being out there, um, we were in India and Bangladesh. It's probably a little bit different um, touristy-wise um, and tourist-friendly maybe than... Uh, Australia, New Zealand. So, you know, our time was probably more spent in the hotel, team room kind of games, you know, um, guys would have played the odd bit of PlayStation or, you know, if there was a tennis court, play a bit of tennis, um, swimming, guys would go off to the gym and, you know, watch a bit of TV and kind of just generally yeah. kind of relax, maybe go off to the shops yeah. um, when allowed. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of just trying to be as normal and low-key as you can be. Yeah. Is, uh, is, it, is boredom an issue at times? Because, you know, certainly between our first and second game, there was a long time. And there is, yeah. you know, there is a gap between some of the games. Is that an issue for the players? Absolutely. I think scheduling-wise, it was very similar to the last World Cup. We were in Bangladesh for probably more than a week. Mm. Um, yeah, you, there's a certain amount of cabin fever sets in. Um, um, guys have talked about, you know, wives and girlfriends being over there. I think that's a very, very good thing, you know, making everything as normal as, as long possible. as they're both not there at the same time, the wife and the girlfriend. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think keeping it as normal as you can be and, and not take, try and take guys out of their comfort zones. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whether it's around a golf or going off to the shops or the movies or whatever, I think that's that's key yeah. to, yeah. to their preparation. Because we heard there from, um, from Ed there on the interview that... Uh, Table tennis or ping pong, as they were called, yeah. and seemed to be very much part of it. But I mean, just take the night before the the, the English match in 2011 in Bangalore. And I mean, with the night before the big South African match tonight. I mean, what what are the sort of things that would be going on now the night before the game? You know, guys have you know prep would have been done. Mm. You know, everyone knows where they're going. You know, would have have, have a team meeting mm. um, and going through the opposition and going through you know what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, you know. More often than not, we would have had a team meal before a good game, all yeah. the boys together, you know. Yeah. You know, just that kind of camaraderie and closeness going into kind of a big game. But every, I think most of the time, guys try and keep the things very similar and, and, and kind of be very comfortable with what they're doing and not yeah. trying to do everything out of the norm. Yeah. I, um, I'm interested, Albie, finally, in, in your thoughts. I know there's always a chance in a two-horse race, as I like to keep saying, but realistically... How do you rate um, Ireland's chances? I guess if South Africa play like they did the other night, we're in a bit of trouble. Well, you know, they're one of the top sides in the world. So, you know, if they if they are on the money, it's going to be a difficult day for us. Mm. Um, but like we've seen, they've, they've had a, a stumble kind of in the first game. Um, we've started well. We would have taken a lot of confidence from that. Yes. Mm. So, you know... At the end of the day, you know, the guys have got to go out there. And I think one of the key messages that's come across from, from Australia and New Zealand for the Irish side is the positivity um, and the way we try and play very positive. And I think if we keep doing that, um, you know, there's no reason why, why we could not um, turn South Africa over. It's going to be a difficult prospect, but, you know, um, the preparation has been there. Been and, there. you know, the boys just got to believe. Do we put them in? If we win the toss, um, that's a, that's, that's a <laughs> difficult question. Yeah. Um, I think the way the Irish sides make up is at the minute the strength is in the batting. Mm. Um, they seem very comfortable chasing. Yeah. Um, so I think you know, you know, conditions would would you know dictate as well. It's, yeah. By all accounts, it seemed like a fairly flat wicket. Yeah, so yeah. you know. I, you know, being positive, I can't see Porterfield not wanting to bat first. Um, I think we, we passed that stage now where we say, you know, let's hope for the conditions and see and if we can skittle them yeah. and see yeah. if we can knock it yeah. off. You know, it's 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 a professional outfit now. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, the toss is there to start the game. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Albie Vandermeerve, thank you very much for being our guest tonight on Bales and Buzzers. Yeah, thanks, Albie. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. 
Welcome back to Bales and Buzzers, and we want to thank our very good friends at Currency Fair as well. Now, Currency Fair, if you haven't picked up already, go to currencyfair.com. They are the people you need to talk to if you need to move money into Ireland or out of Ireland. You have friends, relatives that you need to get money to. And they have a great deal for people who are following us here at Bales and Buzzers. And Buzzer is going to tell you about that right now. Yes, and if you go into the Currency Fair website and you type in Slog Sweep, you'll get your first trade for free. And the free trade is fantastic news for them because you can actually pay a lot more than you need to when you're doing these sorts of things. So if you don't want to pay more than you have to when you need to uh, transfer money, currencyfair.com, our very, very good friends. Now, talking of great news too, um, we might get Albie to play model tonight and we have our contest running on at Bales and Buzzer and it is for this magnificent Irish cricket shirt. It's uh, the brand new uh, design and style signed by all of the lads uh, and just make sure we uh, pat down Albie on the way up because I reckon he's already thinking about that on the wall of the place somewhere. <laughs> Looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> Bad at all. Yeah, so if you would like to have a chance of winning that, it's very simple. Just go to theslogsweep.com uh, forward slash Facebook and we would like you to become our friends on Facebook. That's all you need to do. Go to our Facebook page and like us and you could win that, and we'll be announcing that at the end of the World Cup. Now, before we go, you got some tweets there for us, Johnny? I have a tweet. I have a tweet from Sonia O'Sullivan. Oh, who's that's just not a tweet. That is a great that tweet. That is the tweet. Yes. And she just says that just one more sleep before couch sitting resumes before the <laughs> South Africa match. Ah, that is yeah. wonderful. I believe you also got a Facebook message too, mate. I have. I've got one here from yeah. our good friend uh, in Australia, Kieran Sharp, who's going to be on the show later in the week. Uh, I think... The English cricket media and supporters would be far better served focusing on their cricket itself rather than whether or not the captain can sing the national anthem. Here, here. And then he has a PS. After yesterday, their rugby team might need some soul searching too. <laughs> they may indeed. <laughs> now, we'd love to hear from you throughout our uh, show. And all you need to do to contact us is you can tweet us at The Slog Sweep. You can go to theslogsweep.com, our website, or you can go to facebook.com forward slash uh, the Slog Sweep to leave a Facebook message as well. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Really fascinating talking to Ed and thanks again to Albie for coming in. We look forward to catching up with you very soon and all the best to Ireland tonight.